Uh, looking at the bond outflows in South Pleasure. Africa since uh, the beginning of the year, it has created quite a bit of concern, and this is what is also contributing uh, to the RAND weakness that we've been seeing. If you could put it into perspective for us, how, many, how much of an outflow have we seen in the, since the beginning of 2011? Hi there. Well, I mean, so far for January year to date, we've had about a 13 billion rand outflow out of our local bond market. That's uh, foreigners selling their positions. Um, compare that to January 2010 when we had about 4 billion. Um, so it has been quite a significant outflow. Um, to put into context, uh, 2010 um, saw at a peak about a 70 billion rand net inflow into our bond market. Um, we did have a little bit of winding down into the last two months of the year with the final number closing out at about 58 billion rand. Um, so yes, the beginning of 2011 has started off um, on, 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 a, on a bit of the back foot. Mm. Uh, Alexi, from what I'm understanding, the bond market has experienced outflows even towards the end of last year. What would you say prompted the sell-off and do you think it's sustainable? Look, there's a number of uh, factors feeding into it. Um, obviously, one of the most prominent is that the South African um, oh, well, expectations uh, for increasingly expectations are, have been um, are that the bottom of the rate cuts, uh, the interest rate cycle has been reached. Um, so obviously, we'd expect a lot of foreigners to be softening some of their positions. Um, a lot of them were relatively overweight, emerge, uh, South Africa in particular. Um, but if we look at it relative to the broader emerging markets, um, South Africa's held off relatively well. Um, certainly, if you look at indicators such as the CDSs um, and so on. Um, granted, there is obviously a certain element of flight to safety in the current environment with what we're seeing happening in Egypt and emerging markets. Um, but that would really explain probably only the last week or so. Um, it doesn't necessarily explain what we've seen um, from the end of last year. So it really is a, a, a mix of um, lowered expectations in terms of uh, further interest rate high, uh, cuts going forward. Um, and obviously a lot of uncertainty at the moment sovereign problems mm. in Europe um, and, and doubts about the US well, growth story. Alexi, if I'm not understanding you correctly, we look, we've seen around 13 billion rand uh, flowing out of the bond market since the beginning of the year in South Africa. Uh, you know, I've been chatting to quite a few uh, people about this and Peter Major is of the view, uh, for instance, that, he, that this trend is here to stay and we're going to see dramatic outflows out of South Africa and basically prompted by the fact that other emerging markets are looking far more attractive. Look, that certainly is an element that, at play, um, but I think the, the counter to that is that South Africa, to a certain extent, is a very liquid emerging market. So um, our growth prospects are probably better than certain, uh, certainly many of the developing countries, uh, developed countries, uh, but agreed, lagging certain of the other emerging market countries. But that said, the sentiment towards emerging markets in general, um, we expect to remain relatively positive. Um, certainly the markets at the moment have got a lot to digest um, coming out of Europe and the US. Um, and South Africa, certainly our growth expectations are that, or expectations are that growth will certainly improve. Um, we'd look to the budget to see what the National Treasury's current mm -hmm. estimates are. But certainly based with what they had last year, it was relatively bearish, about 2.6%. Um, so, but generally we expect that the, the, the trend to, to moderate to a certain extent. Um, and we don't necessarily see the same level of inflows that we saw last year. Um, a lot of the big gains have obviously been made. Mm. Alexi, okay, let's touch on, I mean, you're talking about the gains being made uh, in 2010, and obviously we'd be silly to think that the bull market can continue when it comes to the bond market uh, going forward. As we mentioned, 13 billion rand out of the bond market so far. Uh, are we going to, can we expect a bit more of an outflow before things start to stabilize? Look, I think at the moment now, a lot of it's going to depend on what comes out of the budget in the 23rd, I think it's the 23rd of February um, this year. Um, obviously, the market will be looking to what government's borrowing plans are, and the state and entity borrowing plans are out there, so to speak. Um, we do expect a moderation in government borrowing, even if not in nominal value, um, certainly in terms of the size of the budget deficit and its weight on the, on the economy. Um, should growth obviously outperform, um, that will support benchmark rates in general. Um, but the, for the foreseeable future, infl well, certainly over the medium term, inflation is relatively benign, certainly well below the midpoint of the, tar of the, of the mm -hmm. CPI inflation band. Um, so, yeah, we, we do expect this, this trend to stabilise um, over the medium term. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly once a lot of this volatility around um, Egypt and, um, and, and, the and the Middle East is out of the way, um, once the bu budget numbers are there and there's clarity around potential changes to capital regulations, etc., cetera, et cetera, um, mm -hmm. we'd, expect, we'd expect things to, to revert to more normal levels, but yeah. certainly we, we're not necessarily foreseeing the same um, ver uh, ferocious, uh, ferocity into, or 
yeah, in terms of uh, yeah. foreigners buying our local you know, I mean, looking at peripheral Europe, and when you see uh, the yields in Europe, they look very attractive and perhaps even uh, slightly more attractive than what we see in South Africa. Uh, do you think there's going to be a bit of a shift even going into these very high-risk areas, or do you think investors are going to also just be focusing on the growth prospects for some of these countries? Look, the, there's certainly, yeah, uh, you can't dispute the fact that uh, in, uh, yields in certain of the European peripheral countries are sitting at relatively elevated levels. Um, certainly, um, the, the market has kind of given the, the EU a bit of breathing space to, to try and sort their, their fiscal stories out. But the fact of the matter is that Europe's still facing very serious structural difficulties. A lot of the measures taken so far have been liquidity focused um, and, don't, and don't solve structural problems. Um, but an interesting development will be the, the issuance of these so-called uh, ECB-backed bonds or EU-backed um, bonds. We saw 5 billion euros being issued last week. We saw the beginning of the year, another 5 billion euros, and those have gone off very well. Um, so if we see a move towards that, um, you'll essentially, we may very well see a situation where the likes of your Portugal's islands um, don't have debt outstanding at 6 7%, um, and it's more an EU-focused debt, and obviously that would allow those investors to obviously start chasing emerging yeah. market yields, which will on a relative basis look, start looking more attractive. Well, Alexi, earlier you mentioned interest rates, and you know there is a lot of concern that we could see an interest rate hike in November this year. It really all depends on the inflationary outlook. If we do see a weaker currency, it means we'll be importing, importing more inflation as well. Uh, what are you reading um, in this at this point in time, given the fact that inflation is even on the radar of the ECB and, of course, the, the the, uh, a central bank in the UK as well? Look, uh, inflation in South Africa is always going to be a concern, especially with the RAND. Um, we see that uh, the trend where inflation increases far more rapidly when the RAND weakens than it decreases when the RAND strengthens. Um, so we could see the gains made in terms of inflation going down last year being unwound relatively faster with this weakening. It is a concern. Um, official estimates are obviously that rates will be on hold. Um, but certainly we'd have to look at the data going forward. Certainly the, the language coming out of the Saab has been, um, has been quite firm um, that certainly the market seems to be under the impression that this is the bottom of the cycle. Um, we may very well be there um, and obviously going forward this will be something to watch. That said though, um, we are still talking about relatively low um, uh, inflation numbers, uh, well below that 4% mark. So. Um, over the medium term, certainly, well, certainly over the short term, nothing to be too concerned about. Um, the medium term outlook will largely be driven by what happens on the currency, certainly.